Tyrone Versus Ministries. Today's sermon is titled, God Pulled Up on Solomon. Now everybody know, or a lot of people heard different songs talk with people, rappers or whoever talking about, Cardi B talking about, you can pull up, you can get it. So just think about the title of the sermon, God Pulled Up on Solomon. Now if you don't know who Solomon is, Solomon was King David's son. King David was an awesome man. King David was a man after God's own heart. King David had his issues. King David, he was a man after God's own heart. But yet he had places in his life where he slipped. So the Bible Old Testament and New Testament. New Testament is the new agreement between God and man. The Old Testament is the old agreement. So the Old Testament, we today in 218 should not say, oh, we don't need the Old Testament no more. Let's be done with it. We we move it in the New Testament. Or we shouldn't be like the Old Testament is it. We don't receive the New Testament. We rock solid and we move with the Old Testament and the New Testament. Because the Old Testament shows us what happened before Christ. When Jesus was birthed into the earth, that's when the New Testament was manifested, if you will. Because if you look at the New Testament, it's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's the life, it's, the, it's these men that walk with Jesus Christ and they heard what came out of his mouth and they wrote it down. So just imagine yourself, Sister Carla, Sister Vizar, walking with Jesus Christ. And everything he said, you, Sister Carla, you're writing it down. You, Sister Vizar, you're writing it down. And then years later, your writings became holy scriptures. Because you wrote down the very words of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So this was not just a man's words. And if you look at Jesus, he didn't waste words. And we got to be more and more like Christ. Jesus didn't waste words. If you jump ahead to the cross, when he was on the cross, he said it's finished. What he said, it is finished. So when we, when we comprehend when we when we get an understanding of this New Testament in the Old Testament it's very important to know what is what so many people in this earth today are confused don't know what to do what to believe because there's so much stuff out there you got Buddha you got Muhammad you got this you got that but I'm here to tell you Jesus Christ of Nazareth is the way the truth in the life and no man can come unto the Father but by me that's what Jesus said no man can come unto the Father but by Jesus I don't knock any other religion but somebody got to tell the truth Jesus walked on the walked on the scene. Just imagine Jesus. Just just picture Jesus. Now he, he's with God, right? God is operating. In the the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word, you skip down to verse fourteen, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So when the Word became flesh, here come Jesus. Jesus stepped on the scene. Sister Carla, Sister Vizar. Here's Jesus. Jesus came with a purpose. He came here for 33 years. He got in this earth and he got out. Not only did he not waste words, as I think about it right now, I believe Jesus didn't waste time. Jesus didn't waste time. Jesus, when he was 13 years old, his mother and his dad, the scripture tells us this. His mother and his dad was looking for him. Amongst the crowd of people, we hear a crowd of people. But more than that, Jesus got caught in the crowd. He got mixed up in the crowd. His mom and daddy doing whatever business they were doing. 
So as they go in through the city or whatever they was doing, read your Bibles, y'all. Read your Bibles and you'll understand what I'm talking about. You there watching through Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whichever media you're watching this through, read your Bible. Because it tells us the life, it shows us the life of Jesus, the one you need to save you. And if you don't read the Bible to learn about this man named Jesus, how can you, how can you be saved? If you want to be saved, you got to not only read the Holy Bible, you got to get the Holy Bible, His words in your heart. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's fine. People are dying in this world. When Jesus, when Jesus stepped on the scene, remember, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You skip, well, that's John chapter 1. Verse 1, you skip to verse 14, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So when Jesus came to the scene, here come Jesus. Now, now this is where the New Testament comes in. The New Testament comes in when, Je when Jesus comes in, the New Testament comes in, the New Agreement. So it's good to understand the Old Testament from the Newer Testament. The Old Agreement and the new agreement. We don't have to sacrifice sheep no more. We don't have to, you know, when you said in the Old Testament, when we sin, we had to sacrifice animal for their blood to be shed, for our sins to be forgiven. That was the old way. That's the Old Testament. The New Testament is when Jesus Christ came. He stepped on the scene. He came down here for us. Let's see. Let's, let's get this thing right. In the beginning, Adam sinned. And by Adam's sin, sin came into the world. But then when Jesus came on the scene, by one man's sin, by one man's transgression, sin entered the world. But by one man's obedience, grace, mercy. So Jesus came down here 33 years. He lived. He obeyed his father. He was in sync with his father. See, the disciples was asking Jesus. They was walking with Jesus. And they, they, they started asking him, show us the Father. And it sufficeth us, it satisfies us. They wanted to no, know, okay. So Jesus told them what? Jesus said, what Jesus said? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Come on, y'all. Read your Holy Bible. Read your Holy Bible. In it is life. Amen. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. Jesus came on the scene, y'all. I got on this, 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 this outfit right here signifying that I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Amen. Like my dad, D.P., when I was about nine years old, he was friends with the pastor. He was up singing the song. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army. And my dad had a cool about him. He had a swag about him. I ain't never seen this in my life. You look at Michael Jordan. He was on the scene when Michael Jordan was dunking on people. He put his tongue out. He was different from the other basketball players. My dad, when he was up there, he was saying, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. My dad, when I was about nine years old, when you guys are sitting right now, we were sitting out there. My dad was up here. If I die, let me die in the army. He was shouting, but he had to put, it, put a cool to it. You got to understand, this walk with Jesus, we ain't got to be, we ain't no scrubs, punks, or chumps. We could be the coolest and the coolest in the earth when we rock with Jesus, because we're rocking with the king of kings. So my dad's up there. He's saying, he put his hand like on his belt. He was he, he got a shout on for Jesus. He, he 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 made this thing. He was having fun with. He was it was real to him. But he put his cool to it. I want to encourage you. Put your swag on this thing. Yeah. We ain't gotta walk in this earth. Well, how you doing? I'm a Christian. Yes, I, I can't do that. No, 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 no. God made you. You. He made you. He made the Michael Jordans. He made the Michael Jacksons. He made the Tyrone Burtons, the Vizar, the Carlos, the Pastor Nicholas Kennedy, the Isaiah, the Caleb. He made you. You. He didn't make you to come in this earth.
term, I'm a Christian, I can't do it. Yeah, we can't do certain stuff and we can do certain things, but keep your, put your swag on this thing. Put your cool because you are you. He didn't, make, he didn't save you to become some boring man. You are you for a reason, be you. Go on and be the greats, become the, the next Michael Jackson, Mike, Michael Jordans. Jesus Christ, I want y'all to understand that there's an Old Testament and there's a New Testament. And we got to understand the Old Testament, they sacrifice animals, bloods for the sins, for their sins to be forgiven. So now God sent his son Jesus. Jesus came into this earth. He got on the cross and he died in his this thing right here. Remember the title of this sermon is God pulled up on Solomon. So I want to, I want, we, we got to understand that though. When you open this Holy Bible, I want to encourage all y'all out there to read your Holy Bible. Learn this because if you don't learn the Holy Bible, how are you going to know? How are you going to know how to, how to have the best life you can have? How are you going to know how to be great like the Michael Jacksons? How to be great like the Michael Jordans? How to be the best you you can be. That's what my dad told me before he left. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be in your heart. Be the best you can be. How are you going to be the best you can be if you don't learn his word? God created you. He is the best. He's Alpha and Omega. He's beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's King of Kings. So if you want to be like God, if you want to with royalty, you got to learn his word. You got to know his will. So you got to understand. That's what I'm telling you. The Old Testament, that's how they did things. The New Testament is with his blood. When he got on that cross, his blood was shed for you and for me. All you got to do is go before him. Father, forgive me for my sins. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And your sins are forgiven because what Jesus did for you on that cross was not in vain. It was a mighty purpose. And you can be saved. Remember that scripture I shared with you earlier, Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This thing is real. When we die, we got to go to, to play either one or the other. You either go to be in the lake of fire with Satan and his demons and, 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 and be forever separated from God because you chose to not believe in Jesus or you chose not to walk with Jesus or accept Jesus or believe Jesus. So therefore, God said, what? Whosoever will, let him come. He didn't force nobody to believe in him. He gave us all a choice. So anybody that denied Jesus and don't want to live for Jesus, they got to be separated from God when they die forever. With, with, with Satan and his demons in the lake of fire, eternal damnation and eternal punishment. But we, the believers who accept Jesus Christ, who confess Jesus as the Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. When we die, we get to be with the Lord. Just like my dad, D.P., he died right now. He's considered, I believe, he's considered the dead in Christ. If your loved ones passed on, they believed in Jesus, and they lived their life for Jesus, and they died, they're considered the dead in Christ. So when Jesus come back, the rapture, the catching away of the church, we the believers, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall not all sleep, but the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which remain will be caught up in the air with the Lord. So it's good to understand the Old Testament and the New Testament. I want to encourage you guys, read this Holy Bible, learn God's Amen. will, Amen. so you can be set up in this earth as a king, as a queen. Amen. Let's look at King Solomon. God pulled up on Solomon. This is the book of Chronicles chapter 1. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him. Somebody say that with us. Yeah. The Lord, somebody say this with us. Somebody say this, and I say us because God is with us. Somebody say this with us. God was with him. God was with, God God was with him. God was with Solomon. So now, and Solomon the son of David was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord, his God, was with him and magnified him exceedingly. Remember earlier I told you King David was the king after God's own heart. And then he had a son. And I told you earlier that he was not perfect. He, 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 
yet he was after God's own heart. He had sin. He made some mistakes in his life. He looked over and seen Uriah's wife doing her thing and was attracted to her. And, and the long story short, just to sum it up, he took Uriah's wife and laid with her and, 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 and got her pregnant and then tried to cover it up, brought Uriah in, tried to get Uriah to go lay with his wife and so he can make him think that he impregnated his wife, but Uriah was dedicated to the army. King David was king. So Uriah was like, no, I'm not gonna go and do this thing with my wife. I'm not gonna have intercourse with my wife because I'm dedicated to this battle, to this war. We got a war to fight. So he would not go. So David couldn't cover that up that way. Whoa, man, I couldn't get him to sleep with his wife. So now how he's gonna, and now she's gonna be pregnant. Oh man, so David killed Uriah. He put him on the front line of the battle. And he told his soldiers to pull back when the, when the enemies came against them. He told the soldiers to pull back and leave Uriah out there by himself. And he was slayed. So this is one of the mistakes David made. One of his sins. We all have sinned. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But that don't make us less than great. Those That's the human part of us. But the Bible says David was, he, he had the... He was after God's own heart. So you look past the mistakes of people. You look past the mistakes and look at the God in them. David was king. So now here comes Solomon. He had his son Solomon. Solomon, check this out. Look into this. Look how this is about to get deep and interesting. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom. And the Lord his God was with him. And magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spoke to all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in all Israel, the chief of the fathers. Verse 3, so Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was the tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. Verse 4, but the ark of God had David brought up from kerjath Jerah to the place which David had prepared for it. For he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Verse five, moreover the brazen altar that Baziel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord. The Solomon and Solomon in the congregation saw to it. If y'all have your holy Bibles, get them out. If you have a Bible app, pull it out and follow God's word as I read it. Is something in here for us. Don't just sit in here and, and let your mind get distracted and be thinking about the new show about to come on tomorrow or next week. Focus your mind on God's word. He has a blessing for you. Somebody tell your neighbor, God pulled up on Solomon. God pulled up, pulled up on Solomon. So let's see how he pulled up on Solomon. And Solomon went up there to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Verse 7, and that night did God appear to Solomon and said to him, ask what I shall give you. Here is the moment where I say God pulled up on Solomon. In the song, you can pull up, you can get it. Well, guess what? When God pulled up, you can get the best. You can get the best and end up having the best life you can ever live. So check it out, here's when God, it said in that night did God appear to Solomon and said to him, so let's, let's think about this. Think about you're at your house, you're chilling at night, whatever you're doing, you're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever you're doing, watching TV, and God appears to you. Could you imagine that, Isaiah? You just chilling at your crib, writing a rap, whatever you like doing, and God appears to you right next to you. So you're chilling. He's right there. He comes, he just out of, you, you, you see, if you, if you look, you're in your living room and he comes out, if there's a curtain in your, in your kitchen or where, one of your doorways and God just walks in your room, he walks in and he appears to you. That's going to be, that's going to be so, it's, it's, it's words can't even explain that. So God pulled up on Solomon, and that night did God appear to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. 
And Solomon said to God, you have showed great mercy to David, my father, and have made me to reign in his stead. Verse 9, now, O Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established, for you have made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. So understand, King David was king, and then his son Solomon, I told y'all about Uriah, how he slept with Uriah, uh, wife, and impregnated her, and then he killed her husband, and then God didn't let that baby, he allowed that baby to die. I didn't say he killed the baby, he allowed that baby to die because it was wicked the way he, he took another man's wife. So why would God allow that baby to, to continue on and him to celebrate his new baby? It was wrong the way he did it. So that baby died. He fasted, but still the baby died. God, I'm, God don't necessarily, God is not here killing babies, but God can allow stuff to happen. Just like he allowed Satan to come up on Job when Satan wanted to test Job. So it's good to understand the way God is. So God allowed that baby to die. And then now after that sin passed on, now he's continuing on his life with Uriah's wife, which now is his wife. Uriah's dead and gone. Now the living life, he asked God to forgive him. Life continues on. And then he has another baby with this woman. Now God blesses this baby. And this is King Solomon. He's raised up. He become king. So here we are, and that night did God appear to Solomon. Understand, Solomon's the king. And that night did God appear to Solomon and said to him, Ask what I shall give you. So I can imagine. Y'all might, somebody in here might be like, Give me, give me uh, 10K followers on Instagram. Give me 100,000 followers on Instagram. Give me a million followers on Instagram. You know, our minds sometimes, is our minds could be vain. Focus on things that really don't matter. But Solomon didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for God to kill the enemy, his enemies. Check out what Solomon asked God for. Now watch what God do when God pulled up on Solomon. And Solomon said to God, you have showed great mercy to David, my father, and have made me reign in his stead. So now he's the king. Now, O oh Lord God, let your promise to David, my father, be established, be fulfilled. For you have made me king over people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. So look what God asked. Look what Solomon asked for. Solomon asked for wisdom and knowledge. Turn that back up for me, Darren, because I'm, I'm fighting against these people out here talking near the microphone. Turn that back up for me, please. Cause that mic is sensitive. So I need to, you see these two people near the window, they're talking, yo, 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 yo. And I need, I don't make sure that the audio don't pick them up over the word of God. Thank you, brother. So look what Solomon asked for. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. So Solomon is set up as king. I want to encourage y'all, don't get bored by this message because this will set this, if you get a hold of this word, I want to encourage y'all, this is not just for Solomon. This is for you, Daryl. This is for you, Caleb, Isaiah. This is for all of you in here, me. This is for us. We can be set up as king and as queen in this earth if we do God's will. 